Hey, Mike with Nerd Problems Gaming here. In today's video, we'll be talking about the top six best NES games on Nintendo Switch Online that you probably never played, so let's get into it. Now, a couple things before we jump into the video. There's definitely a lot of great games on the Nintendo Switch Online service for the NES. In this video, are likely ones you've probably never played, so they're maybe a little bit more obscure, maybe not your mainline games like a Mario or a Zelda, but they're really great games and definitely worth playing. So with that said, let's jump into the list. Now the first game on the list is River City Ransom. So River City Ransom is an open world beat em up mixed with an RPG. So in this game, you'll play as a couple of different high school students, Alex and Ryan, as they go on a mission to rescue Ryan's girlfriend. And along the way, you'll battle various different gangs across River City. And as I said, it's more of a beat em up style game mixed with an RPG. So it feels similar to the Double Dragon series. But like I said, there's a ton of different RPG elements in the game as well. And so it is more of an open world game as well where you don't have a set linear path that you need to travel. Now what's cool is as you beat up enemies, you'll earn money that you can then use to shop in different stores across River City, which will give you items and different foods that you can eat which will then permanently power up your character. And so there's a whole status menu where you can track things like your attack, your defense, your hit points, and depending on what you eat, it will not only heal you, but it can also boost those different stat abilities. On top of that, you can learn different fighting techniques for your characters, unleashing new combos and becoming more powerful. Plus, you can pick up different items to beat up enemies as well. So these can be like chain whips, brass knuckles, and much more. The game is a ton of fun and you can play two player as well in this classic RPG beat em up. So if you haven't played River City Ransom before, I definitely recommend it. All right, the next game on the list is Blaster Master. And so in this game, you play as a young boy, Jason, who chases after his pet frog into a deep cavern. And in this cavern, your pet frog is exposed to a radioactive chest that transforms your frog into a massive monster that runs off into the deep caverns. And so while you're in this cavern, you'll also discover a massive tank called Sophia the Third, and you'll use this tank to explore the dangerous caverns in search of rescuing your frog, while also battling underground mutants within the caverns. And so the game itself plays a lot like a Metroidvania combined with a top-down dungeon crawler. And so it's kind of a sci-fi setting where you'll switch back and forth between the tank and going through these dungeons, but you'll have different power-ups that you'll collect from defeating enemies, bombs you can unleash in the dungeons, and you'll take on massive bosses hidden throughout the areas as well. And so it's pretty cool. Like I said, it has that Metroidvania-style feel where you'll need to explore the world. And as you defeat bosses, you'll unlock additional power-ups for the Sophia tank, which can be things like climbing walls, hover abilities, and much more. And so there's a lot of different areas to explore, each with kind of their own unique environment. But the game is incredibly challenging, but it's also a whole lot of fun. And so if you like action platformers, if you like Metroidvania style games, I definitely recommend checking out Blaster Master. All right, the next game on the list is Star Tropics. Now this is an action adventure game that plays a lot like The Legend of Zelda, but it has more of a modern day sci-fi twist versus a medieval feel like The Legend of Zelda has. And so in this game, you play as a young boy, Mike Jones, who visits his archaeologist uncle, but upon arrival, you discover that your uncle is missing and you end up going on a quest to rescue him. Now again, instead of like a Legend of Zelda game where you have swords and weapons of that nature, in this game, you're using more modern weapons. And funny enough, your base weapon is a yo-yo. You'll be able to upgrade that along the way as you explore different caverns, and unlock the mystery of why your uncle is missing. But the game has a lot of secrets and kind of feels like The Legend of Zelda meets Indiana Jones. Now, one thing that's pretty cool within the game is there's actually a secret hidden within the instruction manual of the original game where you had to put water on it to reveal a secret code to get past a certain point in the game. So I definitely recommend when you reach that point in the game, look up online what that code is, because that was definitely something that was unique to the game when it first came out. But playing a future version, not knowing that, it might be pretty hard to figure out how to get past that point and to guess the code. But if you enjoy dungeon crawlers and adventure games like The Legend of Zelda, I would definitely recommend checking out Star Tropics. All right, the next game on the list is Crystalis. Now this is an action RPG where you play as a young hero that has just emerged from a cryogenic sleep and is one of the last survivors from an apocalypse that nearly destroyed the planet years ago. And as this sole survivor, you're trying to defeat the evil Dragonian Empire 
before they destroy the world yet again. And so this apocalypse was a nuclear war, and so it really left the world devastated and has reverted back to basically medieval times, but now the world is also overrun by dangerous mutants. And so what's really cool is that throughout the game you'll gather different items and swords of different elemental types, and you'll also get different orbs and bracelets that you can use to power up these swords as well. And so you can not only attack with your sword, but you can charge it up and release projectile attacks. And depending on the sword that you have equipped and the additional orb or bracelet that you might have, you'll unlock additional powers, which can help you get past various terrain challenges. So like the wind sword, for example, when powered up, you can destroy boulders. The water sword, you can freeze small rivers. The flame sword, you can melt ice blocks and much more. The game has some challenging puzzles, and a wide variety of different spells that you can learn from healing your character to teleporting around the map, using telekinesis, and much more. It's one of my favorite RPGs on the NES, and if you haven't played Crystalis before, I definitely recommend it. All right, the next game on the list is Rygar. So Rygar is an action platforming game with several RPG elements and also feels sort of like a Metroidvania on the NES. And so you have the side-scrolling action platforming levels, but there's also a top-down view mode as you explore the map where you'll fight enemies as well. And so in this game, you'll play as the hero that's trying to defeat the evil King Ligar. And in order to do this, you'll need to team up with various gods hidden throughout the world, which give you powerful items that you'll use to defeat the king. And so at first glance, it's kind of hard to tell that the game is even an RPG or has those Metroidvania elements. But as you defeat enemies, you'll gain experience in two different forms, one that will eventually boost your health bar, and another that will power up your character, making your attacks more damaging. On top of that, you start with three different base spells that you can use to heal your character, boost the power and range of your attack weapon, and another ability that will hurt every enemy on screen just by attacking, even if you're not even close to them. And so you'll need to use these various abilities to traverse the land, defeat enemy bosses, and to gain different items and power-ups, which will allow you to explore further and eventually reach the evil King Ligar in a final battle. Now the game doesn't have a save feature, but you do have unlimited continues every time you die, and you'll retain your experience as well. And so each new area works kind of like a checkpoint, where you'll continue right at that point after a game over with your base experience in place. And so even if you do happen to die a lot in the beginning, as the game can be pretty challenging, over time you'll eventually start to power up and you'll likely be able to make it to the end that way. The game is kind of a maze almost because like I said, it is more of an open world Metroidvania style game. So there's a lot of different branching paths you could go. So you might consider looking up a walkthrough of where you need to go and when, if you're having trouble finding out where to go. But it's definitely a unique game that I hadn't played till recently. So if you haven't played Rygar yet, I definitely recommend it. All right, the final game on the list is Earthbound Beginnings, also known as Mother. And so you maybe have heard of Earthbound from the Super Nintendo. It's one of my favorite RPGs of all time. And this is the first game from the series that started it all. And so again, similar to Earthbound from the Super Nintendo, it follows a quirky adventure set in more of a modern day setting versus a fantasy setting where you play as a young boy Ninten with psychic abilities that goes on a crazy adventure, taking on supernatural challenges and even aliens. And so again, this is a turn-based RPG that plays sort of similar to the Dragon Quest series where the battles take place in a first-person view, fighting the different enemies. And again, similar to the Earthbound for Super Nintendo feel, in Earthbound Beginnings, you'll fight crazed humans, inanimate objects like lamps, and weird enemies like hippies and much more as you try to gather parts of a melody which can help you defeat these aliens. The game itself isn't quite as refined as the Super Nintendo sequel, but it's really cool to see where this series began. This is also the first time the game has been released with an official translation, so it's definitely likely one you've probably never played. And so if you like turn-based RPGs, I certainly recommend it. But if you guys like this video, be sure to smash that like button as it really helps out the channel. And let me know in the comments below if you've played any of these games before, if you're going to check any of them out now that you've heard about them, if there's other great games on the Nintendo Switch Online service for the NES I should be checking out, let me know in the comments below. And if you like videos like this on video games, board games, and everything nerdy, check out one of our other videos here. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications to get the latest updates of new nerd videos we put out. But once again, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you more soon.